Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, making your own trading view indicator. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on the premium list, which you can find a link to in the description below, or go to intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, as you guys know, we use all sorts of indicators to better navigate the Cryptoverse. Things like the bull market support band, the regression bands, the fair value, the corridor, etc. Okay, all of these are indicators that I, I made using a programming language called PineScript, which is the native language of TradingView. So this is not something you'll have learned really anywhere else. Uh, it's just if you want to learn how to make trading view indicators, you have to learn how to use PineScript. But if you have any type of experience with things like Python or any programming languages, it should not be that difficult to pick up. Even if you do not have experience with programming languages, I, I do want to take a few minutes to show you how, how some aspects of it are, are relatively simple. And the goal of this video is to at least get you to make one trading view indicator and, and then we will we'll take it from there. So uh, first of all, if this tutorial is helpful to you and you make an indicator that, that you like and you want people to see, then why don't you go on over to the Into the Cryptoverse subreddit, which you can find a link to in the description below as well, and, and you can post uh, you know, your trading view indicator over here, and then maybe in a week or something, we'll go through all the different ones that, that were created. Okay, so let's go back to the chart, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna briefly go through how to make a fairly simple indicator, all right? So all you need to do is you need to go down to Pine Editor, which is at the very bottom of the page, and you just click on it and it'll pull up something that looks like this. So there's a few things here. At the top, you'll have, you know, you'll have like, you know, your username and whatever, the version, the, the title of the script, and then it'll, it'll just say, I mean, you, you don't need, you don't need the, to plot the close because we're gonna, we're gonna make our own. Now, first of all, I, I think version five is relatively new and I haven't actually fully gotten well-versed on all of the new syntax. I, I believe there are some changes to the syntax. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to version four. Uh, I don't think they're that different, but I know there are some differences. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and change it to version four. And I know that I need to, I'm gonna change this to study. So we're gonna create a new indicator and we are going to call this dubious speculation, all right? Now, as you guys know, in TradingView, it is fairly easy to pull up a moving average. You just go on, go on over to indicators at the top, and then you type in moving average, and you can see there's a moving average right here, and a moving average will pop up. And you can click on this moving average, and you can go to inputs, you can change the length to you know, a longer term moving average, let's say 100 weeks, you can change the style to you know, whatever you want, and you can get a nice moving average to, to uh, maybe give you a better understanding of where the price of Bitcoin is with respect to prior prior price action. Now, you can also create this in PineScript. Okay, and, and actually you can you can have a little bit more flexibility with it if you if you if you know what you're doing. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove this and we're just going to create it. Okay, so we're just gonna type in a variable. We're gonna say A equals, okay, and here we're gonna type in SMA. Now SMA if you guessed it, right, just simple moving average. So this is part of the of the programming language, just the simple moving average. And then parentheses, we're gonna be taking the simple moving average of the close. So we're actually gonna be taking the closing price each, you know, each each candle over a certain time period. And we're gonna say 100 weeks, all right? So if we do that, and then we just say plot A, we're basically plotting the 100 week moving average. Add to chart. Now. What happened here? It didn't put it on the actual chart up here, but it created another box with the 100 week moving average. This isn't as helpful, right? You wanna see it with the chart. So where did we go? Where did we go wrong? All you need to do is you need to understand that the default is to not overlay the indicator over the price, over the price chart. But all you need to do to fix it is you go on over to the study, you type in comma overlay equals true. If you do that and you click add to chart, it puts the 100 week moving average up here. So if you type in overlay equals false, which is also the default, it'll put it back down here, 
okay? And you could even very quickly put up a lot of moving averages if you wanted to. You could type in the 20 week, you could put that up there, and then you could just, um, let me change this back to true, but you could, you know, you could easily add many different moving average, moving averages fairly quickly just by, just by doing something like that. But let's say you want to manipulate these moving averages to some degree, right? You don't just want to pull up a moving average because that's boring. You can easily do that just by going on to the, up to the indicators. You want to provide, you know, perform some type of analysis, okay? What you can do is, you know, let's say we want to, one thing I've said before is that Bitcoin experiences diminishing volatility over time. And, and, and one of the ways you can look at that is you can look at the extension from various moving averages, various long-term moving averages. So let's put that theory to the test. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new variable, and we're just going to call it B. We're going to set it equal to the price, so we're going to set it equal to the close, divided by A. And we're going to go edit A and make this the 100 period moving average. This is on the weekly time frame. So B equals the closing price divided by A, which is the 100 week moving average. Now, if we're gonna plot B, let's go ahead and do that. And we wanna go back over to overlay equals true and change that to false because we don't want it to, we don't want it to be over the price. We want it to be a separate, a separate chart. So then we're just gonna go over here and we're gonna type in add to chart. And you can see it puts it down here. And if you zoom out, what do you notice? You notice that you get diminished volatility over time. And that over time, you know, the extension from say the, the 100 week moving average diminishes. Okay, it, it diminishes over time, but this is the expectation, right? So the next time it comes back up to this level, we might say, all right, well, hey guys, this is getting pretty far extended now, might be time to take some profits. But then this is, I'm not, uh, this is not financial advice, of course, I'm just giving, giving, um, uh, um, just my, my perspective on the market. So then, you know, you can see how quickly it would be to, you know, to perform all sorts of analysis on this. Um, you can even do things like we could even change the, the variable B. Uh, and actually, you could actually change A really quick. You could change it to a different moving average. You could change it to the 200 week moving average and then check that out and see how that one looks as well. Um, but then furthermore, you could do something like take the 100 week moving average and divide it by the 200 week moving average. So we're going to set A equal to the 100 week, B equal to the 200 period, and then we're going to set C equal to A divided by B. Add to chart. Then you get something that looks like, or, yeah, then you get something that looks like this. Okay. Now, what's interesting is in this in this case, you're you're basically just taking. Um, the, the 100 week divided by the, oh, sorry, we're, we're plotting the wrong thing. We're plotting, we're plotting the 200 week moving average here. That's why it looks weird. We're, we need to plot C. Okay, so we're, this is just the 200 week moving average. So that's why it looks weird. If we plot C, this is what you get, right? You, you're plotting the 100 week SMA divided by the 200 week SMA. And then you could even further an, analyze this and say, all right, well, you know, are there any, are there any useful parts of this indicator? And I mean, yeah, I think there, there could be, right? If, if I can, if I can fix this. So if you, first of all, if you look at say the, you know, the, the peaks uh, in, in, the, um, in this concave convex structure, you'll notice that, do they, do they tell a story at all? Not really, right? Not really, because the bottom tends to be well after the actual bottom. The top tends to be well after the actual top. What could be more interesting is to potentially look at changes in concavity. Okay, so like from going from, you know, going from, um, you know, being concave up, basically we're looking at, at the, um, the, the convexity of, of, this, of this function. And so when you, when you see this change in concavity here, what you notice is the change in concavity actually does get close to a peak, right? And the change in concavity here, while it doesn't get you you know, it doesn't get you right at the bottom, but it does tell you, you know, it does more or less get you in, in the ballpark, right? I mean, this, this was the actual bottom over here, but this one was pretty close. Same thing over here, right? This was the actual bottom, but there was sort of like a, a proxy bottom that, that took us down to $3,800, which wasn't that far off. And it was fairly close to that change in concavity. So this is just something you can use to, you know, to better navigate the cryptoverse. And then 
you know, you spend a few minutes looking into this stuff, you could find all sorts of things that you maybe wouldn't have found before just with the basic tools that TradingView has to offer. So let me know what you guys think about this. You can also do things like plot, plot it in a different color if you want. I mean, I don't know why you would necessarily want to, but if, if you want to, you can. Um, you just type in uh, color equals color, I don't know, dot lime. I believe that's the right syntax when, when using version four. You type add to chart. Yeah, you change it to a different color. You could then say plot something else, right? You could, I don't know, plot plot a different function if you want to. Um, maybe maybe this time we'll plot, um, uh, let's, let's plot a new variable and call it D. And we'll say that D is equal to A divided by B divided by B. So now we're taking the 100 week moving average divided by the 200 week moving average squared. And then we're gonna, we're gonna plot that one in, in red. And if we do that, what do you get? You get this. Uh, well, no, yeah, I'm plotting, I'm plotting C again. Let's plot D. Let's see what, let's see what happens when we plot D. You get something that looks like you get, you get this. Okay. So, and we're plotting two things here. We're plotting C and D. Um, so that's why it doesn't really, that's why you can see one and not really the other. Um, but if you just plot one of them, that's what you get. Okay. So, all sorts of different types of analysis you could do with this stuff if you just take you know take some time to, to to go through it and and to explore various things. Obviously, we're just scratching the surface of of what you could look at. Um, so many more things you could you could dive into. But I just wanted to put a video out there and show you that you know making trading view indicators isn't that challenging. And I you know I think anyone could do it if you just take a few minutes to to try to learn some of it. And if you do make something that's cool and you want to show people, then go on and over, go on over to the Into the Cryptoverse subreddit, post it there. Um, maybe, maybe title it like, you know, like Into the Cryptoverse uh, Trading View Indicator or something, just so it easily catches my attention. And and then maybe in a week or so, we'll we'll go through all the different ones that were submitted and and you know see how they are. So hopefully you guys like the content. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We also have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. We have a sale going on right now. So if you want to lock in the lower rate, go ahead and do so. That's going to end here probably in about a week. So make sure you do that before it ends. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.